Okay, we're shooting concrete in the basement here at Five Culvert with a homemade chute. There's the truck. Hi, my name is Darren Tracy with West Branch Engineering, and I'm going to briefly describe how to pour a concrete floor in an old house that has a dirt floor in its basement. If you install a concrete floor in an old house that uh, has a dirt floor in the basement, you'll be a happy camper. It minimizes the, the amount of moistness in, in the basements, the, the mustiness, the dampness, particularly in the summer months. It improves uh, the use of the basement because it provides more storage space for things that you wouldn't want to put there otherwise. And it can improve the, the drainage in your basement. If you have a high water table in your area, you can install a sump in the corner. You can install a French drain around the perimeter. So there are a few reasons to install a uh, concrete slab in the basement. Um, there's a caveat there. If, if it's too difficult to get some concrete into the basement, I'm thinking of a ready mix truck coming in, you could install concrete bricks <clears throat> or concrete pavers in lieu of a concrete slab. Now, I don't think it functions as nicely, but it's better than a, a dirt floor. So I'm going to talk about the details a little bit and then I'll cut to some videos of actually doing the work and then I'll cut back in and, and describe some details. The first thing that you want to do is level the existing dirt floor. As best you can. Ideally you'd use a, a laser level to do that. You could use a four foot level. Any way that you can level off that floor with a garden rake. That's step number one. <clears throat> step number two, and probably the most important step, is to install a layer of polyethylene that will function to keep the moisture separated from the concrete so you don't have what's called rising damp moving up into your concrete slab, into your living space, and increasing the humidity. So a six mil black polyethylene vapor barrier is critical, most important part of this whole project. So you want to cut that to size, <clears throat> extend it all the way to the perimeter walls and then up maybe four inches so that when you pour your slab, it will be encapsulated by the vapor barrier. You need to strike a line around the perimeter of the walls to establish the height of the concrete. Three and a half inches is a good depth of the concrete. You can do that with a chalk line, snap a chalk line, you can use a laser, you can put a form around the perimeter. There are a few different methods. If you use a chalk line, you want to be careful not to pour over top of the line because you use that, lose that as a reference mark. If you use the forms, <clears throat> you could remove those forms at some point as the concrete is setting up and create a perimeter French drain and that could be really helpful if you have high water table problems in water coming in the foundation walls. Uh, I think that's it. I think I'm going to stop and then uh, go to some actual shots and then come back and talk about those some more. Ideally, the concrete truck can pull up to your, your house or your project and extend its chute directly into a basement window and send the concrete down in the basement and there would be a, a person with a wheelbarrow down there receiving the concrete and then uh, wheelbarrowing it over to the different parts of the basement. In our case, you'll see that the concrete truck didn't have a direct shot to the window, so we had to build a little wooden chute. Um, which served to direct the concrete from the truck down into the basement, and that worked pretty well. Okay, we're shooting concrete in the basement here at Five Culvert with a homemade chute. There's the truck. This is the plastic that we had attached to the wall of the building, and the plastic was there to protect the building from the splatter of the concrete. It gets all over the place, and, and it stains, particularly if you, you don't wipe it off 
right away and it drives. The concrete truck arrives, he will, the driver, he or she will ask you what slump you're looking for. Slump is the viscosity of the concrete, uh, how much it slumps down if you put it in a pyramid type cone, remove the cone. Ideally two to four inches for uh, most commercial projects. The less water, the stronger the concrete and the less the slump number. Uh, often on residen residential projects, guys will uh, wet it up and you'll have a slump of five, six, seven inches. So it's almost a self-leveling product. And in this situation where we're, we're pouring a basement, it's, it's not really critical to have the highest strength concrete. What's critical is, is basically the ease of installation. So we typically wet it up to six or seven inches and it makes it a lot easier moving the concrete around and leveling the concrete. Use this tool to finish your concrete slab. It's a mag float, short for magnesium. Probably not magnesium, it's probably aluminum. Probably don't want to use this tool, it's a trowel. You would use this steel trowel after you mag float it but by hand, this is really a lot of work to uh, finish a basement. After you have the concrete placed to the lines established in the basement, you want it to set up for a while before you, you work it. And uh, it's a matter of timing. So here we are finishing up our old house basement mud slab pour. This clip is actually of another project, but all the details are the same. Note the uh, white bucket that's used as a sump. This is about six hours after we poured. Doesn't set up particularly fast because we had a poly vapor barrier down, so the water doesn't want to go down through. Wants to hang here. It's also cool down here in the basement. It's pretty nice on this 70 degree spring day. So I've got this rigid insulation that I put on the floor so that I did not leave footprints when I walked over here on the floor. It spreads out the load. And I'm just using my mag to finish off, and I'll show you what I'm doing. There's a little swirl pattern to bring up the cream. There you go. It uh, hides a lot of sins, makes it look a little bit better. So that's our old house mud slab basement pour for this spring day. And April 2017. You want to make sure that there are no septic tanks um, in the area where the, the concrete truck is going to drive on the lawn because that thing is heavy and it could collapse a septic tank. So that's something to check out. Do you need mesh and concrete in the basement slab? Um, I don't think so. Uh, reinforcement mesh helps with uh, shrinkage and cracks but for an old house I, I really don't think it's necessary alternatively you can add fibers to the concrete but again I don't think it's necessary new house yes I would I would have reinforcement steel in it for a, a perfect concrete job but we're talking about making a really nasty basement a little bit better so you know I wouldn't fuss with the the reinforcing steel hope you like this video um, push the like button, subscribe. I hope to have some more. This is one of the first that I'm doing and uh, enjoy providing this information for you.